biomass? Well, Josh, biomass is anything that's been derived from a living being, whether it's a plant or an animal. It could be alive or dead, or something that simply just came from that plant or animal as a byproduct. David, you set up some biomass for us. What do we have here? So the first one we're going to talk about is Stanford solid waste. This is waste generated by the people of Stanford. Um, we use it, we need to dry it and pelletize it first, and then we can put it into our gas fire and break it down into much smaller compounds. Um, it's really useful because it's completely a waste product, but it's a little smelly too. So what kind of waste is that? This is, uh, it's poop, Josh. <laughs> All right. So I noticed you guys have some coffee here, David. What do you use that for? Well, we like coffee because it gives us energy, and it also is good to make thermochemical energy as well. Um, it has a lot of long chain acids that can be broken down into much more useful compounds, and uh, it's relatively easy to get. We got it at the Starbucks down the street. So the next one we have is wood pellets, and you may recognize them from what you have in your home. A lot of people use them in their wood fire stoves, but it's also good to be broken down into other compounds. It's got a lot of cellulose and hemicellulose, so it can make a lot of aromatic compounds, which we, we really like and want. Another one we have is miscanthus, and miscanthus, the scientific name is miscanthus by bigantius, so it grows really, really big. They use it a lot for, as a biomass feedstock in Europe, but it's an invasive plant species, so it's very difficult to bring it over to the U.S. They're working now on permits to have large swaths of land grow, start growing miscanthus to be broken down as a biomass feedstock. So the next one we have is algae. And algae we like because it grows really quickly, and it's easy to grow too. Um, it also has a very high heating value, and the compounds found in algae are very use, useful for both ethanol production as well as for pyrolysis. It also smells like fish. Can I, can I give it a smell? Oh, go for it. Thanks. <laughs> so you, uh, this stuff just grows in local lakes, huh? Um, yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I could eat it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so the last one we have here is uh, dining commons waste, produced by the very own students of the University of Connecticut. Um, they sort their foods into compostable and non-compostable uh, items. Then it's taken, chopped up, and dried, and then we can use it as a feedstock for, for biomass conversion. It also smells kind of funky, too. It smells a little bit like Doritos. Oh, yeah, I think I ate those last night. <laughs> what do you use biomass for? So biomass can be used for a whole host of things. It could be used for energy, like what we do here at C2E2. It could be pyrolyzed, broken down into smaller compounds, gasified, turned into carbon monoxide and hydrogen, also known as syngas, esterified, or it could be turned into ethanol. Also, plastic, uh, biomass can be broken down into the, the most base chemicals used as feedstocks for other industries, like the polymers industry or the oil industry. Uh, David, if we're not using a food waste for energy now, uh, what happens to it after, after we throw it out? Well, it turns into waste. Um, back when I was an undergrad, uh, they didn't have compost piles in the dining commons and all the food waste just got thrown out. Now people are becoming more en en environmentally friendly. They turn it into compost and it could be used either as, as compost and fertilizer or it could be turned into energy by uh, some of the ways I just mentioned. What kind of biomass works best for turning into energy? So when you're turning into energy, the one thing you don't want is water, because if you put water on a fire, it goes out. So um, the kind of biomasses that work best are those that don't have a lot of water in them. They need to be dried and processed before they can be turned into energy. Uh, wood is awesome for that. And surprisingly too, algae, which lives in water, is uh, once it's dried out, is pretty good, pretty good feed source. So some of the ideal biomass feedstocks are those that we get a useful product for, for food, and it's a, it's a byproduct, it's leftover. Like if you have corn, you get the corn and you eat it and it's great. And you also have the stalk, which you can then mash up, dry out, and use as a biomass feedstock. So those plants that are plentiful, that we have a lot of, and that we're not really using them for anything right now, are, are the ideal biomass feedstocks.